In this Elden Ring video, I'm going to be showing you my Sanguine Spellblade build. This is a New Game Plus build that focuses on the use of Aberrant Sorceries. These are the sorceries that set the Bleeding Status effect. A lot of people have been asking me to make a build that revolves around these spells or a mage build. And I've sort of hybrided it into a melee caster build. And I'll sort of explain why that is in this video. So first, let's talk about the Albanaric Staff. This is a staff that scales primarily with Arcane and some Intelligence. It has decent sorcery scaling at 8080, being about the same as the Carrion Regal Scepter, which is obviously not as good because that's a lot more stat investment. But what this staff is good for is the fact that it improves the status effect or bleed buildup of the spells that we're using the Aberrant Sorceries because it has Arcane Scaling on it. It's the only staff that has Arcane Scaling. So if you want to increase the blood buildup of those spells, which is really the strength of those spells in my opinion, then you must cast them using this staff. Unfortunately, what that does is it reduces the damage natively that you would get from these by using something like the Carrion Regal Scepter because of its higher sorcery scaling, but in exchange for that, you're getting more bleed buildup. There are a couple of other benefits to using this staff in order to cast these spells as well, and that's because you're going to be increasing arcane significantly. You can use something like Sapuku on your weapon, like your melee weapon, whatever you decide to go with for this build, and it will give you a significant bleed buildup as well because you have so many points into arcane, and... If you're using the Dragon Communion Seal in your offhand, which you should be as well, this will give you a good status effect buildup with any spells or incantations you cast with that. And it'll also give you very good damage with spellcasting if you decide to add some damaging incantations to this build. So it'll allow you, this build will basically allow you to cast sorceries and incantations however you want with very good status effect buildup and relatively good scaling. So another staff that you can use for this build is the Staff of the Guilty. I don't recommend casting with this staff. I'd rather uh, put it in your offhand when you're casting. And that's because you get the 20% damage increase to these two spells when you have this equipped. You don't need to cast with it, much like other um, sorcery scaling staffs that have you know some sort of bonus to a group of spells. You don't have to actually cast with it in order to get that benefit, but you need to be having it out when you do it. So this is something that I don't use that often with this build, and I want to explain why, but there are scenarios where it will be handy for you. One of the major issues with Briars of Sin and Briars of Punishment is that they have very long cast times, and they're not very easy to use against aggressive enemies or aggressive bosses because you need distance in order to use Briars of Punishment very effectively, and you need some time to cast the spell if you're using Briars of Sin, which isn't always easy to do if an enemy is right on top of you or a group of enemies are right on top of you because they can stagger you out of it if you haven't gotten far enough into the animation. There's actually hyper armor on the animation for that spell if you get far enough in. Sometimes you don't have enough time. So the reason I decided to make this a Spellblade build is because sometimes you need to get in a spell off very, very quickly or an attack off, and neither of these spells is very good at point blank range when that's happening. Giving yourself a melee weapon allows you a solution when enemies are right on top of you, and because you have it set to seppuku, High Arcane, it fits right into this build, and it'll also allow you to trigger bleeding on those enemies when you are fighting them in melee. It's not particularly important what weapon you use in for a melee for this build. I am using Roger's Rapier because I simply fell in love with it during my Crimson Duelist testing. But you can use any weapon that you want here as long as you meet the stat requirements for it um, and can put Seppuku on it. So that's a limited range of weapons, but it doesn't, you know, you can pick whatever one you like for this build. So kind of going back to the Staff of the Guilty for a second, if you have the Albernic Staff in your left hand and the Staff of the Guilty in your right hand, and you're casting spells, and then some enemies get up on top of you or a boss gets up on top of you, and you need to pull out your melee weapon and buff with Seppuku, you're not going to be able to do that very easily in combat. So what I prefer to do is just keep my melee weapon out in my right hand, buff with Seppuku, trigger Lord of Blood's Exaltation and White Mask if you have it equipped, get that increased damage, and then start casting spells. Even though the spells that you can cast can trigger hemorrhage on enemies and trigger your Lord of Blood's exaltation, you have to be very, very close to them to make that happen. And the strength of Briars of Punishment is the distance. This spell has very, very good distance. So you're trying not to be close to them when using it. And Briars of Sin is just very, very hard to use. And it usually one-shots a group of weaker enemies anyway. So you very rarely trigger bleeding with that. And if you're facing a boss, you're almost always better off just using Seppuku and melee attacks if the boss is right up on you than using either of these spells. So probably the best scenario to use the Staff of the Guilty is when you're like in a co-op scenario and somebody is like mailing a boss and you're just hanging back spamming Briars of Punishment. That way you don't have to keep rebuffing yourself with Seppuku periodically and you can just keep getting that extra 20% damage on every cast that you do. Or if you're like just running around the landscape 
and enemies are spread out so far, you don't really need to buff with Sapugo. That's another opportunity where it would be good to have out, and it can save you that. But just keep in mind that if your weapon isn't buffed with Sapuku, and you swap to it, you're not going to be able to trigger bleeding on enemies very easily. When it comes to armor for this build, I'm using Alberic's robe, his hat, and his gloves, because each one of these increases your damage with the Thorn Sorceries by 5%. So that's a total of 15%. The legs, if you wear it as part of the set, don't actually increase your damage with the spell. So no need to wear those. And I actually have the Malformed Dragon legs on, because they kind of match the set a little bit, but have way more armor. And it still keeps me in the medium equip load with this build. So getting that more protection there, I thought it was more valuable than keeping my equip load light. But you can go either way if you want. Another good option would be to put the white mask in your helmet slot to get that extra 10% attack power when you trigger uh, hemorrhage on an enemy or yourself. Depending on how often you're doing that, um, that's a better, you know, that you could swap that on and off depending on what you're going. That's also a good option. Not as fashionable in my opinion, but you can use that if you want. So when it comes to talismans for this build, there are five that I use and there's like three that I always use and one that I swap back and forth with another one. And these are the Graven Mass Talisman, Lord of Blood's Exaltation, the Magic Scorpion Charm, Taker's Cameo, and Great Shield Dragon Crest Talisman. So the Graven Mass Talisman just increases your spell damage by a good amount, so that's why we have it there. You know, we're going to be spamming Briars of Punishment and using Briars of Sin. Sometimes it increases the damage. Lord of Blood's Exaltation will increase your attack power when you set bleeding on yourself, so when you use Sapuku or when you trigger it on an enemy by attacking them or through casting spells if they're close enough. That's really good. That's going to increase your spell damage and your attack damage, which is fantastic. Magic Scorpion Charm is theirs because both of these spells deal magic damage, so that's going to increase the damage that they do. And then Taker's Cameo is there to regain health when you kill something with, like, Briars of Punishment, for instance. You actually gain more health back than the spell, and this will keep you from bleeding away. You could obviously use something like Blessing's Boon uh, to heal you over time with this build if you want, but um, this is a good way to just keep your health kind of topped off as you're running around the landscape. And obviously, it's not very useful in boss fights when there are no enemies, so we swap that out for the Dragon Crest Great Shield Talisman to give us more protection during boss fights. So let's talk about the spells for a second. Briars of Punishment has an extremely long range. It sort of does like a ground tremor that goes under the ground and pops up very high. Has decent tracking on enemies as well. So if they start charging you, it usually still hits them. Doesn't have a very big AoE. You can hit enemies that are kind of close, clustered really tightly together, but they got to be really close or it's not really going to AoE the target. And it can hit enemies that are like in the air. Um, like, if you know, different elevations, it can hit them from higher or lower, which is great. And the second cast of this is much faster than the first cast. So I recommend, you know, if starting from as far distance as you weigh on tough enemies and just starting to spam as soon as you can because those second, third, fourth casts are going to be much faster than the first one. So you don't want to be, like, casting once and then, like, rolling out and then casting once or whatever. You want to be trying to hit with at least two or three of those casts in a row on a boss or tough enemy in order to trigger hemorrhage or to build up hemorrhage significantly by the time they get to you. So a couple pokes of Sapuku will trigger... Um, hemorrhage on the and again the range of this spell is absolutely phenomenal it's one of the longest ranging spells I have tested so you can hit things from super far away different elevations use that to your advantage with this build when you can Briars of Sin is a tough one because it is like usable three times in a row and again the first cast is the slowest sort of duck down thrust the, the staff into yourself and these bleeding thorns come out and then they come out a little bit further on the second cast and come out even further on the third cast so the AoE gets bigger and bigger and something interesting about this is it has better bleed build up than Briars of Punishment. And enemies that run into the thorns will take damage. So it doesn't have to hit them when it pops up. Like they sort of hang around for like a fraction of a second. And if enemies walk into them when that happens, they'll take damage too. So that's really good to know. And really I use this spell for like big enemies. Like if you can get under dragons with it, it's easier to hit big targets with it. But because we've morphed this into a Spellblade sort of build... Using your weapon with Sapuku is usually better on big enemies that you can get under it than using this spell. I just haven't found a lot of great uses for this spell because you can, as a spell blade, you can literally just attack and get the same with Sapuku and get the same effect or better than this spell. But if you were playing a pure mage and you weren't using any weapons at all, this would be your point blank spell. But you would have difficulty in boss fights where the boss is really aggressive or in scenarios where you're surrounded by enemies and you can't get it off very easily. Besides those two spells, I have Golden Vow, since the, the Briar's sorceries require faith in order to use them. The, but the most expensive one is 24 faith. So one more point allows us to use Golden Vow, which boosts our defense and um, our damage. So that's fucking great. So that's why we're using that. Blessing's Boon is a good option to recover health. Uh, because you're using Taker's Cameo, you don't need it that often. But 
like in a boss fight, for instance, it's a good place to cast it. There are like so many ways to buff in this build. I'm trying to minimize them, which is one of the reasons I put Taker's Cameo in here. So you don't have to buff with Golden Vow and Blessings Boon and Seppuku every time you go anywhere or Unseen Form, which is another spell we do. Otherwise, you spend like all your time just casting spells on yourself and very little time attacking. Uh, Terra Magica is there. Again, another buff that you can throw on the ground to increase your magic damage at the beginning of a boss fight. Use this usually at the beginning of boss fights where the enemy is far, far away. Um, but I don't really use it on the landscape. And then Unseen Form is really nice with this build because I find that Briars of Punishment go so far that when you kill an enemy while you're kind of buffed with Unseen Form, they have no enemies near it have no idea what happened. Like, if you can just walk around and wipe everyone out from so far away, they don't even know what's going on, um, which works really, really well. So that's kind of fun to do from time to time. You don't always need it, but it's fun to have that option of kind of like a stealthy blood mage sometimes. So typically when I'm running around on the landscape, I usually just buff with Seppuku before I engage a group of enemies and start casting from as far away as I can. And then if enemies get to me, I'll melee them to re-trigger Lord of Blood's Exultation or White Mask if you're using it. Because that buff only lasts 20 seconds and usually enemies you kill are so far away, you won't get that buff from killing them with Friars of Punishment. So if one gets up to you, take that opportunity to melee it to death to trigger the those talismans again to further increase your spell damage so that you can keep casting and sort of alternate between the two. I find that works really well, which is a reason that I made this into a Spellblade build instead of a pure Mage build. It's not the only reason, but it's one of them. When it comes to attributes for this build, I have 50 Vigor, 30 Mind, 9 Endurance, 8 Strength, 17 Dexterity, 26 Intelligence, 25 Faith, and 80 Arcane. Um, we don't have any points available for Endurance and Strength in this build. You don't need Strength at all. Endurance would be good for more Stamina but and Equip Load, but we just can't justify the points there. 50 Vigor is to make sure that you don't die in one hit. You do have, when you have the Dragon Crest, Shield Talisman on and Golden Vow up, you have about 35% resistances across the board, which isn't terrible. Probably want to take this up to 60 at some point in New Game Plus, though, just to make sure you're not getting one shot. Mine is at 30. I'd like this to be a bit higher, maybe 35 or 40. But at this point in the game, I didn't have the points for it. But you want to take that up to 35 or 40 throughout New Game Plus or into New Game Plus Plus. When it comes to faith, as I mentioned, the Briar Sorceries or the Aberrant Sorceries require faith in order to cast them. 24 is the max that or that is needed for one of them. One more point allows you to use Golden Vow, so it's like a no-brainer to add that there. And also keep in mind the Dragon Communion Seal scales with Faith to some degree as well. So if you're using incantations, casting them with the Dragon Communion Seal, uh, you'll have better damage from those points as well. 17 Dexterity is there to meet the requirements of a Roger's Rapier. This is going to vary a little bit depending on what weapon you're using. You don't need to use Roger's Rapier for this build. I just happen to really like the weapon and it works really well with this. But you can use whatever weapon that will still allow you to use some Puku in this spot. And that may change the requirements. 80 Arcane is there because Arcane not only increases the damage of this, the sorcery scaling of the staff because it is S scaling in Arcane, but it also increases the bleed buildup of the spells we're using. So cranking Arcane is ideal here. And I did some testing too between like how much Arcane and how much Intelligence, you know, going back and forth between different val values of these, seeing like what's the sweet spot here. And you can actually get a little more damage if you drop Arcane and increase Intelligence, but it's like two more damage I found in my testing. So you're basically losing out on like, or not two damage, but two sorcery scaling. So you're losing out on two sorcery scaling to have much better bleed buildup if you went something like 60 arcane and 40 intelligence or whatever. So I think just going all the way arcane is good and then increasing intelligence afterward. The reason I have 26 intelligence here is just because all of my other points were going into intelligence to further increase my sorcery scaling. So really from this point forward, you just need to take vigor up to 60, mind up to 40, and then just keep increasing intelligence to increase your damage. A couple of tips before I wrap up this video. If you're using the Flask of Wonders Physique, you're going to want the Magic Shroud and Crack here. These spells deal magic damage, so that's great. If you find a boss is just, like, you know, bleed immune and, um, you know, magic damage doesn't work very well against him, you can slot other spells in this build. Keep that in mind. Like, there are so many other spells you could use in this build. Um, I just wanted to focus and show that you could do it with only blood spells. But you can add whatever spells you want to this build. You could literally qualify for just about everything. And also, if you're using a Great Rune, I recommend using Godric's for this build. You have six stats, uh, depending on, you know, what weapon you're using that you need attribute points in. And this can help free up some of those and increase your damage. It'll allow you to take, for instance, five points out of Faith, like five points out of Dexterity if you use this. Um, you could take five points out of Arcane if you plan on using, you know, the Rune all the time or the Rune Arc all the time. That would allow you to dump these into Intelligence to further increase your damage. So that wraps up my Sanguine Spellblade build. I hope that helps to show you how you can use these sorceries. They are very difficult to use, but Briars of Punishment is a fantastic rage option, and I think it works better pairing these with some sort of good melee weapon because there are just moments where it's too hard to cast these spells. 